Hey, this is Math 2 again, Unit 6, worksheet number 1, looking at similar polygons. And it begins by giving you a set of polygons here, or, and they want you to talk about pairs of congruent angles and extended proportions to talk about similar sides and angles. So first of all, if it says uh, angle A, which is right here, it wants to know what that one's going to be similar to. And in our case here, what that would be similar to, get out some markers real quick here, sorry. Um, hey, this is my loop. So because we have A listed right here, up on this corner, again, looking at just where that's at in location, we're gonna look for the one that matches over here, which is gonna be the same as angle W, okay? And that's where that one would be right there. When I look at angle B, angle B is over here, and so the one that matches over here is gonna be angle X. There's that one. When I look at angle C, angle C is down here, and so it matches the one over here, which is angle Y. And then finally, looking at angle D, which is in red right there, it's gonna match angle Z right there. Now, in terms of how this is gonna work with the side links, we can see we're comparing AB right here to W, W, sorry, X, AB to XY. X, no, sorry, AB to WX right there, WX. AB, WX, that's my one hash mac. Then we did BC, we'll make that two, over XY, that's two. Let's do our three one, we'll do this one, one, two, three, we'll call that DC, or we can call it CD, doesn't matter if we wanna go that direction, which means our matching one is here, which is YZ. And then what's left is this one here, one, two, three, four, we can call that DA, and that's gonna match this one right here, which is ZW. All right, and that's number one for how that works out there. Let's move down to number three. Okay, number three. What we have is, we have, it says give the scale factor of the left polygon to the right polygon, meaning I'm gonna start here, and what does it take to go from this one to that one? <laughs> if not similar, right, not similar for both A and B and explain, and then also complete the statement of similarity. So, <coughs> in terms of a scale factor here, we can see that we're going from a six and moving from a six to an eight is what I'm doing. So I'm going from a six to an eight in terms of my scale factor. Can that be reduced? What I mean by that is, is there a number that goes in both of those that make this a little smaller? Sure, six and eight have number two in common. Two goes into six three times and two goes into eight four times. So for this first move to go from six to eight, I'd say a scale factor is three to four. For this to really be a scale factor though, that same thing has to take place from that value to that value. Well, that value that value is already just simply three to four. I don't have to reduce it all. And since they match, since these match each other, we would say that it's indeed a scaled copy of the other one. And our scale factor will just be the reduced part, three to four. Or we could write that as a fraction, three fourths like that. So that's our scale factor there. So, and now for here, C, D, E, F is similar then to Q, R, S, T. And we're just trying to keep the order the same, C, D, E, F, and then go around this way, Q, R, S, T, to go around that direction there. Let's look at number five. Number five, we have this long line here, and we're trying to see if it correlates to the eight over there. So that's gonna be like a 10 to eight. Again, can we reduce that? Sure, two goes in here five times, and two goes in there four times. Now let's take a look at our other value. We're going from a four to a three. So a four to three. We can see here that five to four and four to three are not the same. And since those are not gonna be the same, then what we would say is they are not similar, okay? So there's not a scale factor there at all. And we would just say that LMNO is not similar to that one right there. We don't have to do anything else with it. That's all there is to it, okay? So do be careful on number six, because number six may look like it's a little like funny there, but this is gonna be one where, if you look at our values, 88 and 49 for the angle measurements there, if you add that up, you have 12, 13, 137. Well, what's left for this angle measurement? That would be 180 minus 137. We borrow here, and we have 43 left over. Now notice here, I have a 43, a 43, a 49, a 49, which makes this one also an 88. So you do have the same angle measurements there, so make sure when you're comparing sides, you're comparing the right sides to each other. Okay, let's look at number seven. Number seven, 
It says in the diagram below, triangle NOP, which is down here, is similar to, so NOP, NOP is similar to WXY. So this way is similar to that way. Name the scale factor to go from one to the other. Okay, well, let's take a look here. Here we have a four and we're going to a 10. All right, so if I wrote it out like this, four to 10, I asked myself, can I reduce that down? Sure, two goes in there two times and two goes in here five times. So our scale factor would just be two to five as our scale factor there. For the measurement of angle X, angle X is right here. Angle X is gonna match up with this one right there, which happens to be 58 degrees. Angle Y, which is right here, is gonna match this one. I don't know that one quite yet. So let's see what I can do. I have a 49, I have a 58, I add that up and I have 107. And then I need to take that away from 180 to see what remains. And that's gonna give me 93. So the angle measurement for P, it's gonna be 93, oops, nope, 73, 73. Sorry about that, 73. is 73 for P, which makes Y also 73. And Y was 73 degrees. WX is this length right here, and I have the six right there. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, I have a six and I have to go to a value right here, we'll call it question mark, okay? My scale factor is two to five, right? That's what I know, that's my small one compared to my larger one. My small value here is six, and I don't know what the WX is. I could call it WX and just leave it like that. So what this means is that when I multiply that together, I know that I have this W X value, that length times two is equal to five times six, which is 30. So divide both sides by two to find out that W X is gonna be equal to 15. All right, that was too quick. We'll do another one here in just a second, right? Here we have to find out what NP is. So now we're gonna go from the 12 over here to this way again, that's like taking our, our scale factor two to five and setting it equal to our big one is on the bottom, so that's 12. And this one we don't know. We can call it X if you wanna choose one variable, that's fine. Cross multiply, so you have five X equals two times 12, which is 24. Divide both sides by five. And X is gonna equal, in this case here, 4.8. Okay, and you can use a calculator for that or you can get five and four fifths however you want to do that, or four and five fifths, sorry about that. So those both are good answers there. So 4.8 for number seven. Okay, let's take a look at the back page. Gonna look at here, number nine, okay. The quadrilaterals that are shown are similar. Find the scale factor of the larger to the smaller, then find the values X, Y, and Z. All right, so scale factor, let's look at the values that we do have. We have 14 going to a four, so that becomes 14 to four, and we can reduce that. Two goes in here seven times, and two goes in here two times, so my scale factor is seven to two. All right, now the x value here, we have an x, we have a six here. So let's set it up like this. We have our large one over our small one, Right, our scale factor seven to two equals our large one, which is X over our small one, six. So now I cross multiply. Seven times six is 42, which equals two X. Divide both sides by two. So 21 equals X. And that's what I'm doing for that one right there. Okay, let's look at Y. Y is here and eight is there. So again, I have my scale factor seven to two. And we're gonna set it equal here. This time I don't know, again, the larger one, we'll call that Y, over my small one, which is eight, cross multiply. So I have 56 equals two Y, divide both sides by two again, and we have 28 equals Y, okay? So that's our Y value. And then for our Z value, once again, same idea. We have for Z, we have 35 going to the Z one. So I have seven over two. This time I know my large one is 35 and I don't know my small value. So I'll put that on the bottom. And I have seven Z equals 35 times two, which is 70, divide both by seven and Z equals 10. And that becomes my solution for number nine D. Okay, let's move on down. You the same idea for number eight and 10. Let's move down here to number 11. 
Okay, given the similar polygons, so again, they're telling you they're already similar, use proportion to find the value of each variable. All right, so we know that these are similar uh, polygons here, and we have to find X and find Y. All right, so to find X and Y, we have to do a little bit of work here. Um, we have to figure out which parts match which parts. Do we have any parts that are already given to us? I'd say yes. First of all, look at this. We have J, K, right? J, K. This is the first line, J, K. It says, and then we have N, M right there. So sometimes it's helpful to read those words there or read the letters. J, K, and N, M are the parts, the order matters here. Meaning I can look and say 40 goes to 16. My large one compared to my small one. So can I reduce this? Sure. 8 goes in here 5 times and 8 goes in there 2 times and so now I have a scale factor. So to find x then, what I'm going to do is do my large divided by my small and this time x is the large one there and the small value on the opposite side of that, that straight line here, is I have kl. Notice how it says kl there, that's going to be those two. I want to look at ml which is here, ml which is 14. So then we can cross multiply, five times 14. Five times 14 is gonna give me 70, and that equals two X. I'll divide both sides by two, and so 35 equals X. And that's my X value. For the Y value, same idea. I have my scale factor, five over two, and here's Y on the small side. So we're gonna put that on the bottom. That's my small number. <laughs> and I put the large number, 45, up top. Cross multiply, 45 times two is 90, equals five Y. And I do 90 divided by five to find out that, sorry, 18 equals Y. So Y equals 18, and I've solved for number 11. Okay, let's look over here at the next one. Let's go to number 13 on the next page. We have Q, R, S, All right? So here's Q, R, Q, R, S matches TU, here's TU, okay, so let's see what we can do here. Um, well, what do we know, what do we know, what do we know? We know that side there. We have RS, which is the last two, RS and then UV, okay. So RS and UV go together. So those ones go together to help us figure out our scale factor. That's 54 to 36. This might be a number where you think, I'm not sure what goes into both of those. Um, but actually what happens is nine goes into both of those um, nicely. Okay, so 54 divided by nine is six, and 36 divided by nine is four. Okay, from there I might recognize that two goes into here three times, and two goes in here two times. So my scale factor from big to little is three to two. So let's put that down as my first uh, side of my proportion, three to two. And then we're going to figure out what x is equal to. Well, x for the x value, I'm going to look at RQ compared to UT. RQ, the large side is 24, and the small side is x plus 5. Now I can cross multiply, and we have 3 times x plus 5 equals 24 times 2, which is 48. Distribute, we have 3x plus 15 equals 48. I'll subtract 15 from both sides, and I have 33 equals 3x. We divide both sides by 3, and x equals 11 for number 13. Looking at number 15, same idea. We have MNP, which matches QRP. Okay, so so there we go. <laughs> um, so what do we know? We know then that this value corresponds to that value there to help us with our scale factor, 24 to 28. Okay, so four goes in here six times and four goes in here seven times. So our scale factor is six to seven. So now to find out what our scale factor is gonna be, our X value is gonna be, we'll do our small side, which in this case is X plus eight and set that over our small, our large side, 3x minus 9, and then we will cross multiply. So we have 6 times 3x minus 9 equals 7 times x plus 8. 
we distribute here, we have 18x minus 54 equals 7x plus 56. Okay, let's subtract 7x, subtract 7x, so we have 11x, and we have that equal to add 54 there. We have 10 carry the 1, 110. Divide both sides by 11, and x equals 10. And we're all done with number 15. Okay, number uh, 17, 17. Here we have another uh, shape, and we wanna figure out what this is gonna be equal to, all right? So in this case, because we don't, we can't figure out the scale factor, that's okay. We can take the short side, or the, the uh, straight side of this one, right, 4x plus four, and put it over the, um, well, however you wanna do it. We do the straight side of this one, and put it over the straight side of that one, and then say it's equal to the diagonal-ish side of this one, 7x minus nine, over the diagonal-ish side of that one. And that's how you can set that up, okay? So now we do our cross multiply. So 60 times 4x plus four equals 48 times 7x minus nine, okay? So it's not really a very pretty problem, but it does work and we can distribute and we can be just fine there. Could you set up a different way? You could, I just wanted to keep it in the same kind of way we've been doing it from our scale factor being small to large or large to small, keeping it the same, all right? Because of it's a, it's a proportion, we could actually move things around quite a bit, but for now, we'll leave it ugly. And we have 240x plus 240 equals 48 times seven. I don't know what that is, so I multiply on my calculator. 48 times seven is 336x and then 48 times a negative nine is 432 minus 432. All right, that's exciting. So let's add 432 to both sides, add 432. So we know we have 672 over here and we're gonna subtract 240X, subtract 240X to both sides. 336 minus 240, it's gonna be 96X, divide both sides by 96. And so 672 divided by 96 happens to be seven. And so X equals seven for number 17. Again, you could set this up by saying um, diagonal over straight equals diagonal seven X minus nine over four X plus four. You could reduce that and then do your cross multiplying. You'll still end up with seven. And that's actually probably a little better way to do this problem. So you don't have to distribute with such large numbers. Number 19, our last one here, we have C, D, E matches F, G, E. And so again, we can see that, that in this case here, uh, 17 is gonna go with 6X plus three, okay? And the 21 is gonna go with the 8X minus one, all right? And that's our, our setup for that one there. And then what we do is we would cross multiply. So this becomes 17 times 8X minus one, equals 21 times 6x plus 3. And then we multiply that whole thing out to see what we end up with. So 17 times 8 is 136x minus 17 equals 21 times 6, which is 126x plus 63. So I can subtract 126x, subtract 126x, that gives me 10x over here. Add 17, add 17, and we end up equaling 80, divide by 10, divide by 10, and x equals eight, and that's all there is for number 19. Okay, hope that helps you out a little bit. Those are your odd answers, and we'll see you next time.